Hope you had a good day in the Lord. Enjoyed the uh, rain that we had. It was nice and warm out. And we had some, some rain to refresh the ground. We need some rain. Uh, turn with me in your Bibles to Psalms. Uh, Psalm 18 is where we're going to be at this evening. And we're going to read verses 28 through 36. So out of respect for God's Word, uh, once you have found it, please stand to read it with me. Uh, Psalm 18, verses 28 through 36. You, O Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. With your help I can advance against the truth. With my God I can scale a wall. As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is flawless. He is a shield for all who take refuge in Him. For who is God besides the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the deer or the feet of a deer. He enables me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. You give me your shield of victory, and your right hand sustains me. You stoop down to make me great. You broaden the path beneath me so that my ankles do not turn. Bow your heads with me. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word this evening. Lord, we ask that you would just speak to us from it. Lord, we ask you to just bless us this evening as we gather here in your house. Draw us all closer to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Every once in a while, you'll see a vehicle moving along the railroad tracks. A vehicle, though, that isn't a train. Dan already probably knows where I'm going. He knows what that is. Because usually it's a pickup truck driving on the track like a train. But it's not a train. It's a truck. I don't recommend any of you taking your truck, whether it's a 4x4, a Chevy, or a Ford, or a Dodge, or whatever it is, and going out and running on the railroad tracks. I do not recommend it. You will not like it. Okay? You will not like it. But if you've probably been driving down the road occasionally, and you look over, like maybe going to Huntington, and see a truck just running down the track. Anyway, if you've never seen it before, and I have many times, so I knew what it was, but if you've never seen it before, it might just kind of jump out, out at you and go, wow, how, what's going on? How is he doing that? Okay, I mean, it's just tires don't ride on tracks. Not very well at all. See, that's the problem. Well, if you look closely, you'll see what is actually going on. This would be a maintenance truck for the railroad. Okay? They are specially modified to run on the tracks. It has a special... Uh, train wheels in the front and in the back that are attached to the truck that extend down that run on the track. So it lifts the wheels up slightly and it can run on the track. And it, like I say, the first time you've ever seen one and you see it flying down the track, it just looks odd because you just don't see mm -hmm. cars or trucks or whatever riding down train tracks. Mm -hmm. But it is, especially, it is specially designed for that purpose. It's modified to run on the tracks. Okay? That's a, I think that's a pretty neat idea. And if you were out this weekend and you saw the Friends of the EBT, a lot of them had their little, um, little carts, their little uh, speedsters, speeders that they had, and they run them down the tracks here, uh, down here on the EBT. Had them out put putting down the, down the tracks this weekend, enjoying that. So it, it's kind of a neat thing to see. Especially that, that first time you see that truck going down the tracks, you just kind of just, it might just jar you a second before you figure out what it is. So this truck is especially outfitted for this purpose, for this job. It is able to go where a truck would normally never be able to go. It's specially designed to do it. it is, it's specially equipped for the job that it's to do. My sermon title this evening is Going Where You Thought You Couldn't. Okay? Going Where You Thought You Couldn't. Mm -hmm. Now, it wouldn't surprise me at all if some of you this evening are headed into something that you're not sure you can handle. In today's world, it's a common thing 
just start, every week something jump up at us and just startle us and be something we're not we don't we're not feel we feel that we're not ready to handle whatever it may be it may be in our job it may be in our family whatever it may be things pop up all the time and, and we a lot of times our first reaction is I can't handle this actually your first reaction might be I'm sure I can't handle this but if God is in it and it has to do with God's purpose you will always be able to handle it Amen. no matter what it Amen. is no matter how insurmountable no matter how impossible it seems if God is in it I guarantee you you will be able to handle it that's right it doesn't matter if it's a burden you're going to have to carry or maybe you're already carrying or there's a challenge or an assignment in front of you that you must accomplish or there are maybe some possibilities something maybe frightening or exciting in front of you or maybe both I guarantee you every week every day something comes in front of you that you may feel inadequate for you may feel that you are not equipped to handle but again if God is in it I guarantee you you will be able to handle it because he will give you the strength he will give you the ability and most importantly he will equip you for the job he has for you praise God just like that truck on that train track is equipped to do what it is meant it is meant to do I guarantee you God will equip you and I to fulfill his purposes every time he will equip us mm -hmm. missionaries get ready to leave for the mission field and often can't speak the language and they go into the language studies and many times it's off it's hard but you know what God always is faithful and always equips those he sends mm -hmm. he always does it he never leaves us helpless he never puts us in a situation that we can't handle with him we may not be able to handle it without him that's true but mm -hmm. we can always handle it with him amen the Lord the one who is leading you or sending you somewhere right now, somewhere you feel you can't handle, wants you to be encouraged. And the scripture we read this evening is part of that encouragement. And that's what we're going to look to for where we're going where we thought we couldn't this evening. Okay, so let's look at our scripture again this evening. Psalm 1831, we'll start. For who is God beside the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? Okay, and that's how this section starts out. Now, notice, who is the subject of the promises of the following verses? Okay, notice the one doing what the verbs say will happen. Okay, just listen. It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. Think about that for a second. It's not you that has to do it at all. It's not you that has to be ready. It's not you that has to be equipped. God will do it. He will strengthen you. He will prepare you. He will equip you. Amen. And I can hear you say, well, I don't know if I've got the strength for this. And God says, you're right. You don't. But I'm going to give it to you. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to outfit you. And I'm going to equip you. And I'm going to make you ready. And I'm going to prepare the way ahead of you. So when you get there, you'll know that you've been prepared. Amen. Remember Abraham? The Lord said to him, go. And he's like, where am I to go, Lord? You know, you'll know when you get there. Mm -hmm. Abraham wasn't ready. He didn't know where he was going. He didn't know how he was going to get there. All he knew was just to go. He, he went the direction the Lord told him. And how was he going to know when he was going to get there? He said, you'll know. You'll know. And that's the way the Lord always works. He doesn't expect us to be ready. He doesn't expect us to have the strength. He doesn't expect us to to always be prepared for every situation. Now, that doesn't leave us off the hook for being spiritually prepared. We need to be spiritually prepared every day. Right. We need to be reading right. our Bible, God's mm -hmm. Word. We need to be in prayer. We need to be living right. So when He calls us, that's we're already ready spiritually. Now He just has to equip us and mm -hmm. put our armor on us and point us in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So we need to be ready every day. That doesn't leave us, you know, 
we don't get to beg off. We have to be spiritually ready every day. But God, if we are, God will take care of the rest. He'll take care of everything after that, whatever Great it may be. God. So, again, you don't have the strength. I don't have the strength, but God will give it to us. And He will outfit us with the strength that we've never had before. When we need, but when is it? When we need it. There's another scripture that says, As your days, so shall your strength be. If you don't need that strength today, guess what? God's not giving you that strength today. But when you get to that situation, on that day and in that time, He will give it to you when you need it. That's right. I guarantee it. When you need it. So you don't have to fret if you don't have the strength today. But when you have to face that challenge, when you have to do whatever God is asking you to do, He will give it to you in His time, at the right time, every Amen. time. Amen. Um, now, again, you will have the strength when God gives it to you. Psalm 18 continues. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. I always thought this scripture was kind of interesting. I'd like to run as fast as a deer. <laughs> I really would. Now, Mrs. Cresswell, when I was a kid, used to tell me I could run as fast as a deer, but I ain't never caught any deer, so I know I couldn't. <laughs> she was stretching the truth a little bit. But I would love to go run like a deer. But what is this scripture really saying? It's not physically here. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. This sounds strange. But what it's really saying is, for whatever your journey, whatever hill you have to run up, whatever path you have to run down, the Lord will equip your feet. He will equip you for that journey. He will equip you for that path, whatever it is. Kind of like that truck with those specially equipped or, uh, wheels for the tracks, okay? This is almost the same thing. I will make your wheels like the wheels of a train if God wants to put you in the track. Okay, we can kind of make an analogy there. But again, he will make our feet like the feet of a deer. He'll put, he'll put into us and equip us with what we need for that journey. Mm -hmm. If you've ever watched deer run, and you want, if you're a hunter, you've watched them run away many times when you haven't got a shot in, uh, you know, they jump and run in the oddest ways that you, you, you would think, you know, naturally, which are way you would run. They don't do that. They, they dart and jump over and around, and it's just like, okay. But you know what? That is born into them. That's that natural instinct to evade and escape, and, and they're very good at it. And so God giving us the feet of a deer will help us. He will help us in whatever way we have to run, whatever way we have to go, Amen. no matter the terrain. No matter the terrain. Now, going back to the other scripture, which was for the Jews, and it says, as your day, so shall your strength be. That was for one of the tribes. Why? Do you remember the story? Or do you remember the account? It was because one of the tribes of Israel was going to live in a very, very rocky, mountainous part of Israel. And if you remember from the pictures I brought back, I drove around some of that, and there is some of the most rugged terrain I have ever seen anywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have some mountains around here that have rocks on the side and everything. These, it was interesting, the first time I was driving through the one area, I, at first I was like, what is that speck between those rocks? And here it was a cow, and the cow looked like a speck, and these rocks were huge on either side of it. And I'm going, that's some pretty big rocks up there on that hill. And it was all rocky. And what God was telling the, the, that tribe of Israel at that time was, Hey, I know your inheritance is some pretty rocky, rugged ground. But you know what? I'm going to take care of you and give you the strength to live in that rocky and rugged ground. Amen. And God does it for us today as well. No matter what our rocky and rugged ground is, whether it's at work, mm -hmm. or it's at home, or it's with your neighbor, or, whatever, or, or the government, or whatever it may be, God will give you the strength for that day, that hour, and that situation. Every time. Every time. Mm -hmm. God says, again, he'll give you feet like a deer. And then it says, he enables me to stand on the height. That means standing where you never could stand except for the grace of God. Standing where you never could stand except that he's going to custom outfit you for where he wants you to stand on the height of a mountain, to be able to see, to be able to get over that mountain, whatever it may be. He's going to equip you for whatever the journey is, wherever he's asking you to go 
in whatever he's asking you and I to do. He will enable us to stand mm -hmm. on the height. Amen. God's never going to take you where he won't keep you. He's never going to ask you to do something for which he will not equip you. Mm -hmm. Ever. Amen. Ever. He knows your limitations. He knows your strengths. He knows your weaknesses better than you do. Mm -hmm. And so he's going to help you wherever he asks you to go. Every time. Then he says, he trains my hands for battle. Sometimes life is a battle. Sometimes the things we face really do seem like battles. Every day you fight and fight and fight against certain things. And like this morning I was talking about, we fight, uh, we're going to fight against our society that's trying to push in on us Amen. and squeeze us into their mold. But we're going to have to have our hands trained for battle to fight against that and to stand no matter what our world tells us, no matter what our world does. Maybe you're saying, I don't even know how to do this. Well, guess what? God says, I'll show you how. I'll give you the knowledge and how to do it, no matter what it is. And then he says, my arms can bend a bow of bronze. Give me your shield of victory, and your right hand sustains me. You broaden the path beneath me so that my ankles do not turn. Okay, what's that mean? Your ankles. What happens? What causes an ankle to turn? What causes an ankle to turn? Usually, it's when you step on something wrong. Like, if you're playing sports, the easiest way to turn an ankle is to step on an opposing or, or another player's foot when you're trying to run or turn. When you're hiking, you step on a rock bunny and your, your ankle and your leg turns, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So what's God saying here? You broaden the path beneath me so my ankles do not turn. Well, God says, I'll get the road ready ahead of you. I'll prepare the path so you don't have to worry about falling mm -hmm. as long as you stay on the path. Remember that, as long as you stay on the path. Now, I don't want this to sound sacrilegious, okay? But what in The Wizard of Oz was Dorothy supposed to do? Stay on the yellow brick road, okay? Now, I only bring that up because when she got off of it is when she got into all of her trouble. She didn't listen, okay? Now, I don't, like again, I don't be sacrilegious, but again, God is saying the very same thing here. Maybe that's where the writer that got that from. You know, stay on the path that God gives you. It's when we get off of God's path is when we get into trouble. When we turn to the right or we turn to the left, instead of staying on the narrow path is when we get into trouble. And so God is saying, I will make sure that the path is broad and it's ready for you to run, and you don't have to worry about falling. I'll take care of the path. You just run where I want you to go. Mm -hmm. You just go where I want you to go. Stay on the path. I'll take care of the rest. Mm -hmm. And he does it every time. And he's faithful mm -hmm. to do it every time. You see, God is fully, fully committed to providing all that you and I need. You realize that? God is fully committed to providing all that you and I need. Amen. To do Amen. what he's telling us to do. He will not leave us out in the cold. He will never put us in a situation that He's not going to help us out of. He's never going to put us somewhere that He doesn't have a plan. Mm -hmm. Think about that. If He puts you somewhere, He has a plan. Now, we may not see the plan right up front. I mean, my, the perfect example of this, and I, I use him all the time, is Joseph. Do you really think that Joseph knew what God's plan was when he was sitting in that prison cell? Mm -hmm. I'm sure he was like, Lord, is this your plan? Why am I in this prison cell? This surely can't be your plan for me. Well, I could be doing so much more. But it took God's timing, His perfect timing, to, it, to be for, for, for the whole plan to be revealed. And mm -hmm. Joseph then was lifted up out of the prison and became the number two person in the entire nation of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Number two. Thank God. That is what happens when we wait on God's timing and do it God's way. Again, we may not, we, there are going to be times we're in the prison. Not knowing why we're there and not knowing the plan. But guess what? Guess what? Joseph was what? He was faithful even in the prison. He was, there. he was put there. He was put there unjustly. It was not. He didn't go after Potiphar's wife. She lied and put him in prison. He was there unjustly. But he served in prison. He served in prison faithfully and he found favor with the guards there. He found favor with the other inmates there because he was serving faithfully. Mm -hmm. And all the while, God's plan was being worked out 
And eventually, in God's perfect timing, it was revealed. Amen. So God was, he was preparing Joseph all along the way. Even way back when he was a younger man, when he was telling his dreams to his brothers, maybe when he should have been keeping his mouth shut and not telling them his dreams, <laughs> telling them dreams. he should have learned that lesson. Right. That got him into trouble. Right. That made them mad. <laughs> You know, right. but but you know, it was his enthusiasm. He didn't do it. He didn't really do it for to be mean. He he wasn't doing it to be proud. He was just enthused, and he didn't know not to keep his mouth shut. But again, even way back there, when he was he was too impulsive and, and saying things he probably shouldn't have been saying, God was preparing him all along the way. God was preparing him when he was out there, you know, with his brothers, and they threw him in the pit. And I'm sure he did a lot of praying in the bottom of that pit because he could have been left there to die. But eventually he was pulled up out of that and then sold into slavery. And again, slavery or prison or whatever, I'm sure all along that way he was like going, Lord, why am I here? What did I do? But he kept faithful to God. Mm -hmm. Kept Amen. his eyes on God the entire time, whether he was a slave or he was in prison. And again, God lifted him up mm -hmm. and used him in his perfect time, his perfect way. And we need to take that in our own lives because again, God is working out His plan in our lives every day if we're following Him. He's working out His plans and purposes for us and for our families and for our church mm -hmm. and for our community and for our nation. Now, our nation is adrift. We've known that for a long time. Our nation is adrift. And we, and I've said this many times, I believe America has probably already gone beyond the point of no return. And we look at God's judgments that have been coming upon us. We look at, but you know what? That doesn't mean between now and when Jesus returns that we still can't see victories inside the church. Amen. And we can't see, still see victories inside our families of our lost loved ones. Right. Right. We just have to stay faithful all the while. Whatever we're going through, whatever we're dealing with. Right. Keep praying for that lost loved one. Keep praying for that co-worker that just tries to Get under your skin. Keep praying for that neighbor of yours that just refuses to, to even deal to even deal with you in, a, in a, a right manner. You have a neighbor that just treats you bad all the time or whatever. Keep praying for them. Mm -hmm. Because you don't know God's plan. And you don't know God's timing. But all we are to do is to be faithful and trust God that He will equip us mm -hmm. and prepare us for whatever that plan is, mm -hmm. for whatever it is. So again, God is fully committed to providing all that we need. Those who've never, and here's the thing, those who've never risked going where they've never thought they could go have never seen God in His most amazing and His most miraculous. That's if you've right. never stepped out in faith for God, you've never seen how amazing God can be. That's if you've right. never stepped out in faith for God, you've never seen the miraculous that God can do. Again, Abraham stepped out in faith, left his people behind, his family, and went to a country that he'd never been to before, didn't know where he was going, just knew God said, go. And he saw God work amazingly in him and his family's life from there on out. And God blessed Abraham's family, and lo and behold, of course, that family then ends up with Jesus, who's the Savior of the world, comes from that. That's why Abraham needed to be faithful. Mm -hmm. Because it was his family that the Savior of the world would come from. That's mm -hmm. why God called him. That's why God called him. So guess what? Here's another little example. You'll never walk on water if you never get out of the boat. Mm -hmm. Just think of all the disciples in that boat that day that Peter got out of the... Yes, Peter sank, and we can, we can beat up Peter for taking his eyes off of Jesus and sinking into water... But guess what? He's the only one of the disciples that ever walked on water. Even if it was for a short amount of time, he's the only one. Every one of those disciples could have walked out on that water to Jesus. Every one of them. But he's the only one that got to do it because he's the only one that had the faith to do it. Mm -hmm. Yes, he got scared. He took his eyes off Jesus and began to sink. And then Jesus lifted him back up out of the water. So again, if you never get out of the boat, you'll never walk on water. So trust God. Keep your eyes on Jesus and get out of the boat in whatever situation is that God has for you. Mm -hmm. Get out of the boat. Step out in faith. And God will, again, equip you, strengthen you, and prepare you for whatever He has for you. Praise God. You see, today, God is custom-fitting you and I for the road ahead, whatever it is that we have to face. 
today and every day. For the assignment that he has ahead for you and me, he is preparing us. He's actually enlarging you and I, our faith, and strengthening us to what we need to have in the future. And he's even clearing the path ahead of you, preparing for you to walk down that path. So with all that being said, again, I hope you're ready spiritually. And if you are, if you stay ready spiritually, we can step out in faith and trust God. Hold His, hold his hand. Hold God's hand. Let Him lead us wherever He wants to lead us. And I guarantee you, He will give us the strength and the wisdom and the encouragement and equip us to do Amen. whatever He has for us to do. Amen. Every day. Whatever, it's, if it's whatever challenge you and I are going to face tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Who knows what challenge we're going to face tomorrow when we get up? Who knows? Whether it's on your way to work and it's a blown tire or it's uh, out of gas or, or, or whatever it is tomorrow, whatever, whoever it is, whatever the problem is, whatever it is, God will take care of us no matter where we go and no matter what we face. So, again, you can go back this week and read this scripture for encouragement. You know, this psalm, uh, Psalm 18 here, has a lot of encouragement down to the entire psalm. And look at it. And see what it says that God will do for us mm -hmm. and help us all along the journey to fulfill His purposes. Amen. His purposes. Amen. Stand with me, please. Jeff, would you close your prayer, please?